holy tech bro ego slash masterclass and how to punch yourself in the dick repeatedly and kill a whole community batman what the fuck <laughs> i love me a good old holy war in tech it's good it's been a while it's been a while since we had a good old holy war huh it's good timing it's perfect timing in the lead up to an election what we should do is um uh, start a holy war on a uh, content management system that powers 40 percent of the internet including the white house website can't see any problems here <laughs> what do you even say what do you even say at this point like i have written um so many different versions of this like a serious explainer what's happening uh, but obviously once things start to get legal you've got to be really careful right <laughs> okay so just a bit of a disclaimer here okay because we do have to be careful as funny as it is that um it's pretty much one of the few times i've seen every person on reddit very strongly say they're not a lawyer all at once and i was like well you fucking were yesterday <laughs> it's like all of reddit is always a lawyer this must be bad <laughs> but anyway i am not a lawyer okay i'm not a practicing lawyer i am in my final year of my juris doctor however okay the common thread across uh, a lot of what I talk about in tech was uh, that there's these tech guys who got very, very wealthy, post-economic, if you will, off the back of people like me, like users like me and you, and, you know, user-generated content, moderating communities for free, writing plugins, writing code. You know, this is the same old shit, which is this stuff was taken from us without our consent, our code, our words, our thoughts, our dreams, our data, everything. And these guys keep saying that it's theirs. It isn't theirs. They're trying to rewrite the story, okay? And I'm here to remind you that I was there, I knew what the promise was, and you didn't deliver, and we want our shit back, okay? And that's that's the common thread here, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, whether it's WordPress, whether it's Reddit, you, it's not theirs. Like, all tech community wars are, like, super niche, right? It's very hard to explain. There's a lot of presumed knowledge, <laughs> which is why uh, I've sort of sat on this for so long because I don't know really where to begin because some of this is, what is WordPress? <laughs> What is .com and .org and all this stuff? I kind of have to explain an awful lot of internet history for you to even begin to understand this. I'll do the best I can. I think it's very important that I qualify uh, where I'm coming from here. I am extremely personally invested in this because I hitched my wagon to WordPress early. Okay. Um, I think I've been using it. For, I think it was 1.5. Um, the timeline isn't quite correct, but I was around for the fork. I was around for the the Mambo, Miro, Joomla Wars, okay? I've been around for every since then over these things. Um, these wounds always run deep and they always keep resurfacing and that's just um, it's part of the fun of being, <laughs> being in the industry because it's um, not only extremely niche and difficult to explain, so you look crazy to anyone outside of it, uh, but it also gets... You're combining all of the great things, which is um, um, people's passion, uh, money, and uh, autism. So it works out really well. <laughs> it always goes really well. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I just want you to know that this stuff is just my opinion based on my experience, okay? The details are still unfolding, and um, it, it's getting pretty litigious, and... Um, um, Matt seems to be a little, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why he feels the need to post through it because he just keeps making it worse. I hope he's well. Um, maybe, maybe be sure that he's in his right mind before you do anything because you won't feel good about it in the end if he, he's actually just having some sort of episode. That's a possibility as well. Again, I, I'm not qualified to say that, and if I was qualified to say that, I wouldn't do it based on from it from outside. Um, I'm just saying that in my experience, this is just abnormal, destructive behaviour, and I don't know what the fuck is going on, and that's okay. I'm just saying. Now, so a lot of this is me trying to communicate my upset, disappointment, distress, 
uh, and uh, concern for the future of the WordPress community. I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, and um, But I'm not a lawyer yet. Uh, this is why I'm training to be one, but I'm not one, okay? But even if I was a lawyer, you need to understand that the details of this particular issue, there are many, many causes of action here, many different facets to it. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here, and so it's going to take a while to really get to the sort of meat and bones of this stuff, okay? Because you're looking at, like, just the trademark issue alone needs a trademark specialist lawyer, you know, the GPLs, tech lawyers, you've got, um, then you've got corporate lawyers, then you've got tax lawyers, then you've got your not-for-profit stuff. There's so much expertise here. And there's this is why I think a lot of Reddit have gone no, because there is the general, I'm a, like, I'm not a lawyer. And then all of the lawyers are going, I'm not that kind of lawyer to give this advice. <laughs> like it's, it's getting to the point where it is so niche and so specialist that even people who are lawyers are saying, I'm not the lawyer for this. I can give you my... Uh, feel opinion on it like on its face to me this looks fucking this looks messy okay um but i am not qualified and even if i was qualified i still probably wouldn't be qualified in anything but one part of it okay that's how complex this issue is so anyway i just want to make it clear that for those who are doing um analysis on this uh that you should be very careful to make it clear that it's your opinion and make it very clear that this is now sort of, this is like global litigation, triple A, big law money, like teams of lawyers um, going back and forth on this. This is going to be expensive. It's going to be complicated and you don't want to be in it. <laughs> I do, <laughs> but not, you don't want to be in it the way I want to be in it. You don't want to be fucking hauled there and fight. You know, you, you, you get what I'm saying. I want to work in it. If you know anyone, let me know. I will. Um, okay. So uh, if you've seen my stuff, you'll know that my main beef has been around uh, the rewriting of the story around the internet, around tech, and these tech bros who have stolen everything, whether it's users, data, code, um, uh, goodwill, uh, all of this stuff, trust, they've taken the piss and they've just basically stolen it all from us, claimed the credit and give nothing back, right? Any platform that has had user-generated content in it or um, has had uh, some sort of collaboration or input from the community, uh, you've had people working for free or cheap. You know, in the case of WordPress, you've had uh, developers uh, building plugins, building solutions, learning it, recommending it, playing with it, all of those sorts of things. But you've also had people like me, like I was a developer in the, and designer in the early days. I can code, right? Um, but people like me who were uh, on the client services side, having the meeting with the IT manager who's like, oh, fucking WordPress. Ugh. It's like, no, I was having to sell WordPress. WordPress was a harder sell in those days, okay? We got it to the point that it powered so much of the internet, okay? It wasn't just you. It wasn't just people who contributed code to core for X number of hours or uh, people who only worked for the benefit and betterment of Matt Mullenweg. In the early days, WordPress was a hard sell. I would sit across from middle-aged men, Microsoft partners, selling my clients $10,000 CMSs they didn't need because they just wanted a brochureware website. Like they, were, they were sitting there trying to get them on things like Sitecore or .NET, .NET Nuke, remember that? Or like a proprietary ASP um, website. But I was always in the room having to talk my clients out of that and go with something like WordPress, go with a solution like WordPress, and I would have to have that conversation. I'd need to reassure them that it was better software. I'd need to make sure that it was secure. I'd need to get the hosting and the maintenance and all of those things in place to reassure the client that they'd made the right choice up against people who were charging them, you know, $1,000 minimum a year just to use the CMS, not even design or build on top of it, right? Or proprietary, which easily fifty to a hundred thousand dollars for your average medium business, right? This is not like it was now, where you could just sign up to Squarespace and have a website in five days. Brochureware websites and um, basic CMSs ran expensive. One of the other big selling points was that when you're first starting out, or you're a small business, 
the website can scale with you. So you don't need to pay um, these exorbitant uh, licensing fees just to get started. And you could just get a website and get your basics done and build a sort of minimum viable uh, product. If you go to e-commerce store or something like that, um, you could set it up fairly easily and cheaply, invest more as time went on, right? And the website pays for itself and you've got a good little business on your hands in theory. That went badly, didn't it? Like it, it reduced your startup costs and all of those sorts of things as well. And so now with the ability for one guy to just turn around and decide that you owe him $38 million because on his period, for, for whatever the fuck reason, for I, I don't know, obviously that sends a ripple through the industry uh, that is uh, very much undermines everything that the uh, WordPress community, um, and when I say WordPress community, I don't just mean .org repository uh, people, I mean the entire uh, global movement who power 40% of the web, who sell it, implement it, maintain it, support it, talk about it, train in it, write for it. Like um, they, any one of those could be sued because they said something on Reddit, attacked publicly, um, told that they don't contribute when they fucking do. Uh, that's the thing that got me. <laughs> I was on his side up until that moment. I was up. On, I was on his side until he said, um, "He just, you know, like, yeah." Anyway, this whole uh, Richard Hendricks shtick that he's got going on. It's like, well, okay, sure. WP Engine is getting money from Silver Lake, but you're funded by Salesforce. Like, how are you any different? It's no different. <laughs> This whole, oh, sh oh, shucks, cardigan, sneakers, bullshit. I'm not falling for it. This is a fucking private equity war between tech bros who stole our shit. They stole it. It's not theirs. It's not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> Give it back. Oh, shucks. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best for the community. They use the community when it suits them. They like to rewrite history and pretend that we just gifted them all of this and misrepresent and sort of memory hole this whole idea that they actually promised us something different. They said that they were disrupting. They said we would be going up against those Microsoft partners if we bought into the ideas of the internet and the ideals that we could do things differently. And then we ended up here in a, a, basically a techno-feudalist situation where we cannot get paid for all of the uh, work we're doing um, we're having all of our stuff stolen from us, all of our data stolen from us and weaponized against us at every turn in the form of uh, algorithms. None of this is okay. It's not theirs. They took it under false pretenses. Uh, they keep unilaterally changing the, the policies. They cover their tracks. I, d I don't know how just suddenly changing a policy, retroactively changing it, is um, uh, at all legal. Like, it's just, it's just on its face. A lot of this stuff is illegal now. I'm not a specialist. <laughs> a lot of people are conflating the uh, ethical argument, um, the WP engine and how much they contribute back uh, with a legal one. They don't have a legal obligation to do that. Okay. That is the spirit of the GPL. Okay. Um, legally, they have no real obligation to do so. Okay. Um so they don't really have a leg to stand on at all. <laughs> okay, that's the GPL, bro. Okay, that's what it's for. Okay. Um, but do they have a moral one? Of course. Okay. But also the thing that has concerned me is this sort of redefinition and learning about what actually counts as contributing to the WordPress community. And that's where I take exception because this idea that somehow you only contribute if it is going directly into the pockets or um, back to the foundation is is baloney. It powers 43% of the internet, if you can fathom that. Okay, powers my website. I run WordPress on WP Engine. Okay, I, uh, WP Engine's my host and I've been quite happy with them um, um, because a lot of it is because it's set and forget <laughs> and I don't have to deal with the... Uh, the problems of uh, hosting anymore. I can just just get on with it, right? Um, and they provide a good service, and I've never had any real problems with them, like in terms of their support or anything like that. I don't have any real beef with either. Okay, and I think that the problem is that they're positioning WP Engine as equity back. Like, 
Watermatic is supposed to be separate from the org. So um, I'd be careful about accusing WP Engine of doing uh, anything that you're also doing. <laughs> and uh, if Automatic's um, WordPress experience is more butchered and hacked up on their .com than it is on WP Engine, because at least on WP Engine you have a, you can install a plugin. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so anyway, um, but like this WordPress saga is just fucking another nail in the coffin for me. Like. Um, of these internet dreams. Now, obviously, I'm getting, as you get older, things change, okay? Um, I'm just so disappointed with all of this. Um, it's just uh, it's just yet another big, like, fuck you to people like me who were around when this stuff was new, and we were there, and we know what the deal was, and we thought that um, we trusted them. We trusted the guys in the sneakers. We trusted that if we followed them, they wouldn't fuck us. And they keep fucking us. Like, I don't understand what benefit I got from any of this. I could have just gone and sold proprietary CMSs. I would have made a lot more money. I would have had a lot less grief. I would have had a lot less risk. Uh, my contracts would have not had glaring fucking holes in them because of this problem with the GPL. I wouldn't have had I wouldn't have to talk clients down. I wouldn't have to do all of this stuff. I wouldn't have to explain. I've, I have personally been sued over a WordPress website because of um, a client's misunderstanding around open source and stuff. And then they, like, I, I obviously I didn't um, lose that, but at the same time, like, that is what it meant to provide WordPress, which was that you couldn't provide a warranty. It really is just another big fuck you to people like me. And it's just another big fuck you in the line of another, a, a whole heap of fuck yous from tech bros and their libertarian brain rot. These guys are sitting here huffing their own farts and convincing themselves that it was them and them alone who did all of this when we know full well what the promise was. They hide behind their cardigans and their sneakers and their sort of Rich, Richard Hendricks fucking, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, whatever the fuck is going on with Zuck and his gold chains, I don't Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Fucking hell. Um, and like, but they sold us on something that um, if we put in a little bit more work, a little bit more effort, if we contributed to this movement, it was a movement. It wasn't a... um. It wasn't a theft. It wasn't a scam. It was a movement. We, you know, you sold open source and you believed in it and you sold it. You know, they got rich off of our backs. You know, our work, our our reputations. Like in my, I, I, I built my reputation on backing these projects. Okay, um, you know, when WordPress plugins failed or things failed, guess who had to have the conversations? Guess who had to build that trust? Guess guess who had to fix it? It wasn't just you, okay? Um, you know, we were the sales force, so to speak, for WordPress, okay? It's so like, you're all corrupt. It's not yours. Give it back. Money, please. It's ours, not yours. You stole from us. Stop lying and take that fucking cardigan off. You're a grown man. I'm not falling for it anymore with the fucking cardigans and the stupid fucking glasses and the idiotic nerd shit. No, you're evil. At least if you put on a shirt and tie like the fucking Microsoft guys before, we'd at least have known who the fucking bad guys were. Fucking cardigan. Nothing pissed me off more than that cardigan turning up like that. Jesus Christ. I'm cool, guys. Trust me. No. You stole me from me. The least you can do is put on a fucking shirt while you fuck him in the ass. At least mafia bosses have the decency to dress up in a suit for the occasion. Fucking cardigan. Get fucked. You're not... I, I see right through it now. This, oh, shucks, bullshit. So you, there's nothing left. It, between all of this social media shit and Word, WordPress is just the final nail in the coffin for me. So anyway, so um, having a um, 
So having a fr- private foundation has certain obligations attached to it. Okay. Um, now, this is separate from WordPress.com. So it's funny because a, a lot of the complaint is about how it's confusing between WordPress and WP Engine. I think, so I think more people are confused about WordPress.org versus WordPress.com. I've had to explain that way more times. <laughs> way more even to lawyers like I have talked to about this particular case where I'm trying to I was like and I've had to explain to them that wordpress.com is different from wordpress.org it has a different structure and all that stuff and they still don't get it and I've had to explain it repeatedly and these are people who know tech and know and work in that and I go okay um yeah I think it's pretty clear where the confusion's coming from don't you <laughs> it's like fucking hell WP Engine is however a competitor for wordpress.com automatic funded by Salesforce which people seem to be forgetting which is that they have private equity backing too okay now wordpress.org owns the trademark trademarks are different from the software GPL. So the GPL, which is open source, only covers the code. It doesn't cover the marks or the WordPress identity or the, you know, how that is used. Okay. Now, trademarks can expire if they're not enforced or if you're not doing sort of, especially something that is um, like WordPress, where it is a descriptor as well. Um, You know, you'll see this with uh, Coke, Google, uh, Thermos is a famous example of that where um, you can lose, they can risk losing their trademark because something becomes uh, descriptive, but also uh, so common in the, um, so common in its usage, right? It's called dilution, right? It will become so common that it becomes diluted and therefore you can't claim um, ownership of it, right? And WordPress finds itself in this mess because WordPress is the name of the open source software. Every agency host, anyone like, I mean, even we did at the time, optimized our websites um, for, uh, so you've got SEO copy as well. So you've got to optimize your web copy around WordPress because the people are searching for WordPress developers. And so you've got to do that. So you're not even necessarily using it to pass off. You're using it to compete. (laughs) And it's like the way that this, like, it just, Just for SEO purposes, you need to use the word WordPress in your copy more than you would like because you need to rank, right? Or if you want to run ads or anything like that, uh, you need to. um, So they haven't been enforcing any of this at all. Um, Up at the Spurg out of last week, uh, WP was perfectly fine to use. WordPress is largely descriptive. Um, All of the hosts use WordPress hosting, WordPress managed hosting, uh, WP. They use it freely. Again, I am just shocked that anyone thinks that this is um, actionable at all. Anything other than a personal beef. I, I don't, I don't understand. Anyway, um, but I'm gonna. I'm not gonna tr- go into too much of the technical stuff because there is just so much of it. I want to get to how I feel about it because I'm just really disappointed. <sighs> the problem is, if you start to explain, you got to explain it all because people are going to go, "What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this?" It's a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, every WordPress uh, website by default connects to the WordPress repository, okay, or repo. Um, now, that part of the business, um, apparently, or supposedly, or theoretically, or whatever the fuck, because no one knows anymore, um, is uh, controlled by the WordPress Foundation, okay, which uh, is a 501c3, which is a, uh, p- a private foundation, but those charities, they those codes actually have very, very specific uh, and very narrow requirements, okay, which is that they are um, uh, for public benefit, um, they're in, uh, in this case, it's, I think in the interest of education. So it's only really like some narrow areas, like you're not allowed to get involved in politics. You know, there's all of these rules around it. Right. Um, and also like, obviously you can't be affiliated with a commercial entity, uh, or if you are, you need to be, um, very clear about whose interest or what interest you are acting in when you're doing it. Okay. 
Um, now, again, I'm, I'm just trying to get over this so I can explain quickly, but it is run by a foundation, a, not, a not-for-profit foundation, uh, and uh, theoretically the uh, WordPress repository is public for public good. Everyone can access it, and that is where all of the plugins, themes, um, updates, and all those sorts of things run for the software, which is open source. Okay, That means that you can anyone can download it, install it, modify it, do what you want with it. Okay. And um, there's a whole ecosystem built around that, okay? My business was built around, like, implementation of WordPress websites, okay? Um, but uh, the best analogy I can think of is um, to explain these different relationships is that um, imagine that you need a house, okay? You need somewhere to live. Um, and WordPress, the software, provides you with uh, the basic uh, plans and a kit home. So free. You're just given the the kit in a box, okay, um, and uh, it's free, okay. Uh, obviously, it's no good to you, right? <laughs> a, a, a box house in a box is no good to you. You need someone to build it or put it together or assemble it, uh, and you need land to put it on. You need utilities. You need various number of services. You need to sort of maintain that sort of thing, okay. So, WordPress.org, the software, the core software is a free house in a box, <laughs> okay, with the, the basic structure and scaffolding for a, a house. It's not much good to you without the land, okay, which is hosting, okay, so you need to put it somewhere. Um, the land provides you with, a, you know, you've got different types of land, okay, so you've got, um, uh, obviously, you can put it on a lot in the middle of nowhere that is, you know, not connected to mains, it's all off the grid, and you can just manage it. Obviously, that takes a lot more time and hassle, like red tape and all that sort of stuff to do that. Um, you've got uh, sort of your, your your standard lot numbers that that provides you an address and it's got running water and electricity and you, you can put your house on it and it's whatever. But then you've also got things like apartments and service departments, okay? Um, WP Engine provides a managed service, which is like, let's say you've got a free house or apartment, whatever, right, in the kit. Um, you, that's like the service department version of accommodation, <laughs> I know this analogy is not great, but it's the best one I can think of, um, which is you, you still get the free house, it's still yours, but uh, you're paying for someone to come and build it for you, install it for you. Um, you know, you might have a managed service where they, they manage all of the details and all of the stuff and you just kind of work in the back end. Okay, that's very over, extremely oversimplified. It, it kind of scales up depending on your level of understanding um, it's for people who don't really want to have to deal with web hosting because especially with something like WordPress, you, you, security can be an issue, okay, because WordPress being the most popular content management system is the most frequently targeted. So um, it's not that it's less secure, it's that it's more popular and more vulnerable because it's more likely to have more failure points. But anyway, um, like WP Engine provides a great set and forget kind of uh, experience, as does WordPress.com. Um, I've never had a good good experience with WordPress.com. I find them a little bit gougy, but you know they they're going to do that. Okay, that, that's part of it. So um, so again, they all different hosts have varying degrees of that where you can anywhere wanting a um, self hosting thing with WordPress, which I've done that in the past, managed hosting to uh, four people. So often. Um, so what I would have done is just um, um, install WordPress on behalf of a client and charge them for the service, the server maintenance and the updates and all that sort of stuff. WP Engine uh, does that for me and I just um, can just go in supervise it. So basically my client wins because they're not paying me for too much support. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do support. I can't be asked um, uh, because I'm not running the agency anymore. There's no no real benefit for me doing it. Okay. I really just don't want to do it. Um, but they do it and I manage to maintain those relationships and they and I they provide a good service. Okay. Um, and the client wins because um, they're not having to um, pay me for support. I don't have to be available for support. Uh, it's just mostly set and forget. So anyway, so that's, that's, that's the service that they provide. Um, so, um, but that, this is where sort of the drama kicks in a little bit. Okay. Which is, um, okay, where do I start? So Matt Mullenweg, okay, is the benevolent dictator for life of wordpress.org 
Okay, so .org is the foundation, the charity. Okay, that has tax exempt status, um, and there's a whole bunch of like extremely strict rules around the running of a 501c3. Okay, here in Australia, that would be an association, right? They've got <clears throat> you're supposed to have minimum number of like board members, all that sort of stuff. Now. What I find interesting is that he has since confirmed that it's only him running it, but for these things, you're supposed to have like a minimum number of three office bearers and stuff. So already it's shady as fuck. Okay. So I don't know what the fuck's going on, but just alone, his con conflict of interest alone, his conflict, <clears throat> his conflict of interest alone is enough to just it's amazing. Okay. I would, because one of the biggest arguments with open source uh, to was that you had no one single bottleneck. So uh, with WordPress, because everyone's working on it, everyone's looking at it, it's, it's everyone's. Should something happen or should something go wrong, the hive mind sort of fixes it. Uh, one of the biggest arguments against proprietary software, the Microsoft products or a bespoke thing or something where you've developed it from scratch. But so WP Engine is just another managed hosting. They're just a host. Okay. And they provide uh, services on top of that. Like most agencies would uh, use the software and sell the services on top of it. So take the free kit home and then uh, anyone who wants to pay me to install, assemble it and uh, put it together, customize it, put it on a, in the land and all that sort of stuff, then you get a home, but you still got to pay for other things. Okay. You still got to connect your utilities and all those other things. Anyway, I've explained it terribly, but I have to move the fuck on. Now, it allows for easy website uh, creation, customization. You can put whatever plugins you want, uh, themes, you can choose it and you get your, there's a whole ecosystem built around that. So some people sell their plugins, some people give them away for free, some people have a combination of those things, uh, and there's an entire massive economy. I think there's like 160,000 WordPress plugins on the repo um, and several, I think there's tens of thousands of themes. Uh, you can also just build your own theme. I've, um, there's, I know, um, a few people who've built entire applications off of the back of the API of WordPress. Uh, you've got moves for things like uh, headless WordPress, which doesn't need themes. There's all these innovative things that are on on top of uh, WordPress that I, yeah, it, it's it's a marvelous marvelous starting point for anybody who wants to uh, do uh, web development. Okay, um, but yeah, I mean White House, Disney, New Yorker. I think a bunch of really big websites. A lot of a lot use webs. So, uh, so WordPress is a, a open source CMS, right? And itself, like WordPress itself, is a fork. Under the GPL, you can take a piece of software, you can copy it and fork it. Okay, that's what you mean by creating a fork. Fork in the road. Okay, it is a fork of B two. Okay, um, and he actually took B two and forked it, and it became WordPress. Okay, N not even remotely close to the WordPress that you see today. But, you know, we have to remember that WordPress was also a fork and it was, it was also something that he used, took, modified someone else's code and, and turned it into WordPress. Under the GPL, you can do that, like you're free to do that. Okay, uh, you can um, take someone's code, modify it, release your own version of it, add features, remove features, um, butcher it, hack it so to speak, and uh, do what you want with it. So long as you um, uh, make any subsequent software releases, GPL as well. Matt Mullenweg reaped the rewards of that. And he used our labor, our data, our faith and trust in him and his ability to um, make this uh, happen. Um, and thinking that he might actually pay it forward one day. Uh, you know, he sold us up the river to Salesforce the first chance he got. And it's like, okay, well, uh, if we want to talk about VC money and private equity, profiteering and uh, rentier bullshit, well, let's talk about BlackRock and Salesforce and all of the people and you know who's backing automatic in this thing. While you hide behind a cardigan, acting like you didn't just uh, use the, all of the goodwill of people like me who absorbed the risk of WordPress, who constantly had to fix WordPress, who worked uh, tirelessly on behalf of WordPress, uh, and uh, helped you to become post-economic. You, you shifted all of the costs and all of the risk and all of the, the work, dare I say the hard work, 
uh, and um, sold it to the highest bidder. And now, not content with that, you are going after a competitor using the goodwill that you've earned through the community. Like, I don't understand how this is a good idea. I might, whatever substantive agreement I might have with the very simple thought terminating um, cliche that is, if you earn money from WordPress, you should put back to the community. Yeah, of course you should. You should also acknowledge every agency or freelancer or plugin developer that that was not yours to become post-economic over. I wasn't active in the community, but I was on board with it. I paid my dues. I did my part. I defended WordPress when it needed defending. I sold it. It was a hard sell. You know, there's all these. I, I've just got no words for this because it's just, I find it disgusting. The more I think about it, the more disgusted I get. Like I started out going, okay, I understand. In principle, support him. I, in principle, understand what, where he's coming from. But his behavior over the last few days has just made it worse and worse and worse. What about another solution? I don't know. You want another solution to the governance of word? Oh, I'll do it. I'll be on the board. Have more people on the board. I'll do it. Sounds like a better solution. I'll do it for free. I love WordPress. I wait for you. Oh, I, I await your call. Okay, that's a solution. More people on the board. I'll be on the board. Done. I'll wait, operate in the interests of the foundation at all times. Even if I'm just on the Australian part. Done. Put more people on the board. Okay. Absolve yourself of the conflict of interest that you've got with automatic. Going after competitors, using the foundation, all of the social capital and goodwill of the foundation for your own corporate greed. Not falling for the cardigan. Fucking stop it. I'm tremendously grateful to WordPress for the career that it gave me. But I could have sold other things. I could have made a lot more money doing other things. I could have made a lot more money selling out of the box proprietary shit with a thousand dollar a year license and then some uh, plus all of the support and everything else. I could have been a Microsoft partner with a lot less grief because I believed in open source and I believed in WordPress and I truly, truly believed that WordPress and Drupal and those things um, were better for clients. Um, I absorbed some of that risk. I absorbed that stuff. I put the work in and then to suddenly find out that it was all for naught, um, you know, that's very disappointing. You know, I, I, I think that we need to look at the governance structure of, of the foundation. Watch how people behave when they think they're on the righteous side of things. Like this is a pattern of behaviour for him. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter if you agree with him. It doesn't matter if you think he's a good guy. His actions show otherwise. Just because you agree with someone, it doesn't give them the right to do whatever they want because they're right. That's not how you, you run things. And also, um, whether he's personally been nice to you is irrelevant. I've actually found him to be quite defensive and rude every time I've interacted with him. Um, he cannot handle even the smallest amount of pushback. And... Um, in any argy-bargy I've had with him in the past, it's always been extraordinarily rude and defensive and dismissive. Uh, but also, what happened to, like, watching how... Uh, maybe it's not about you. Maybe he's nice to you because you've got something he wants. Maybe you should be looking at how he treats people that um, aren't you. Maybe your video saying, I like him and he's a nice guy and he's always been nice to me is completely fucking beside the point. Because you should care about how he treats other people. Like the guy from the thesis thing. Or the trans person who made a joke and he fucking harassed. And got that on Twitter publicly. Grown ass man. Harassing a fucking small account. It's like for making a, I think it was a joke, it was a bad joke as far as I remember, but like. I'm sorry, but this is a pattern of behaviour. You know, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, well, he's, oh, well, this person was nice to me. No more questions. My impression of him when I had something he wanted and said what he liked, he was perfectly lovely and fine and he's always been fine. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but how you behave 
all of the time to everyone is also relevant. You're not the centre of the universe, okay? Like, this is the thing. This is for any activist or anything. It's like, oh, I agree with them, therefore they must be right, therefore everything they do is justified. I like them, um, there, there can't be anything wrong. Me, me, me. My perspective, I, uh, I, 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 me, me, me. Well, what about all the other people? What about other people? Maybe we just consider that other people exist and have different views, different experiences, and you should actually take less of your own perspective and a little more of others, and that might help a little bit. This narcissism of, like, it's insane. I don't understand how he's always been good to me and nice to me and um, nothing more to discuss, no follow-up questions, is even remotely relevant. The fact is, he's doing a shitty thing to someone else. That should be a factor. But it's not a shitty thing because what he's doing it for is the right reasons. Like, get your head straight. Okay? Righteous cruelty is a hell of a fucking drug where you think that you can just, if you're on the right side, that somehow everything that you do from there is justified. And it's, it's, that's not the case. I could agree with the substantive part of what Matt's uh, saying, but I actually also don't think it's genuine. I have a feeling that he is using the community and the goodwill of the community to manipulate us for some bigger play that is not apparent to me because, oh, my God, talk about, like, fucking self-immolation in public. Like, what the hell? Um, I, I feel just disappointed by this whole thing. I feel very disappointed by all of it. Um, and I know that I haven't really gone into the details because um, at the end of the day, I mean, I can if you people want me to, I can. But there comes a point where things get so technical and need so much explanation that it's a two-hour video that's not worth doing. It's not worth my time. I don't make money, you know, I don't make any money doing any of this. Um, it, you know, costs me money and time and all that stuff and sanity. I just want to talk about how I feel about it and um, not let them rewrite history. We were of the view that if we all worked together, that we would lift each other up. And now it's it's just, um, I've just been let down so many times with this shit. I, I look around and all I just, I just see destruction and selfishness, like uh, just pure evil, wherever I like, and exploitation and all of it, for nothing. It's just all for nothing. That's that's really how I feel. Is that a lot of this feels like it's all just for nothing. Um, I felt that way for years. It's why I got out. Um, I backed the wrong horse. That fuck up is mine. I shouldn't have believed them. I should have known there was a catch to all of this stuff. Um, whatever. Okay. But don't fall for it if you're like, if you're younger, don't fall for it. Don't let these guys and their fucking cardigans and sneakers and jeans and shit. I'm not going to let them use my hard work to manipulate anyone else. I'm going to tell you that they fucked us over, okay? Con men go through lots and lots of people and they always find a new mark. I'm not going to let you be a new mark, okay? They fucked us. Okay, they're not the heroes, they're not benevolent leaders, they are con men who exploited the labour, effort, um, goodwill, love, trust, dreams. They exploited all of that for us. They have taken it without our consent, repackaged it and sold it off to Salesforce, sold it off to Silver Lake, sold it off to whoever the fuck would benefit them. When you actually express that you've got a problem with that, they use the goodwill of the foundation or um, <laughs> worse, in other their algorithms and the state and all this other shit, okay, to weaponize it against you to the point where it's like, no, hang on, I want my payday, cunt. It's mine. You didn't. I didn't consent to this. I didn't sign this contract. Just because you s changed the fucking contract on the day that you s like served us with the notice that you'd breached it, that's not how it works. You can't do that. It's not, you just can't. And at some point, yes, I get it. You got so much money, you got all the best lawyers, but at some point, some of us are going to become lawyers and some of us are going to fucking beat you. 
And it's like it, what they're doing is wrong. And Matt Mullenweg, like, I, I, I'm surprised. He's not the first, won't be, definitely won't be the last uh, person to, like, really highlight that. We are just mere collateral damage in his pursuit of more money and power and control and his petty personal bullshit between another uh, competitor He's gonna, he, he doesn't give a fuck if he sinks the foundation. He doesn't give a fuck if he takes down all our businesses. He doesn't give a fuck if our websites get hacked. He doesn't give a fuck about any security risk in the lead up to the election of all the sites that are running on WordPress. He doesn't give a fuck. But he will show up in the card again and start like hiding behind the community when it suits him. Don't fall for it. That's all I'm all. I don't know what the takeaway here is, which is don't fall for it. Okay. First of all, if you're an agency and you want, well, you're looking for advice, it, I think it'll be fine. Either way, the community will figure it out. Okay, um, I'm just disappointed having invested so many years of my life uh, in this particular uh, cause, movement, product, um, and um, some people see it purely as a product. I see it as more than that, and uh, you're using people like me who do see it as more than that. Uh, you're taking the piss, and I've had enough. I've had it. I've had a gut full of it. I've seen it with Facebook. I've seen it with uh, with X, oh, X in particular, the Everything app, um, the Everything Wrong with the Internet app, um, you know. And now fucking Word Open AI, and now fucking WordPress of all things. It's like not you too. Like we we can do this better and different, but I'm I'm not going to sit by and let you abuse good faith members of the community who are just trying to help well people who have tried to do the right thing who are just being fucking um abused by or uh matt mullenweg on on x like a lawyer who's doing um great analysis richard best is a new zealand lawyer who's just he just has been offering some of his insights into this stuff and he's got no skin in the game he's he's been perfectly nice and matt starts going after him too and it's like go fuck yourself who the fuck do you think you are? Who are you speaking for when you do that? Are you speaking on behalf of the community or are you speaking on behalf of the corporation? Because you're not speaking on behalf of me when you behave that way. So don't pretend that you are because that's not what the community stuff is about. You're pretending to speak for the community, but you're, when you do speak for the community, you're doing it in a way that makes us look terrible. And no, I don't endorse any of this. Fuck you. Who are you speaking for? Are you speaking for Salesforce, BlackRock and fucking the New York Times and your own pocket, post-economic pocket, or are you talking on behalf of the community? If you're talking in beha on behalf of the community, as part of the community, I'd like to object to the way that... To, I would like to object to your PR skills. Fuck you. Grow up. Have a good day. I will sit on the board. I will happily do that. I will work for free. I've been looking for a really cool project to throw my throw my fucking time into. Hit me up. I'm sure there's a like hundred other people that will quite happily take that from under you. Anyway, to those members of the WordPress community, every contribution matters, no matter what these guys say. Don't let yourself be gaslit over what you've contributed. If you've sold WordPress, supported WordPress, built on top of WordPress, if you set up a website on wordpress.com, if you have done anything to help move WordPress forward, as somebody who knows how hard a sell it was in the early days, you've contributed, okay? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And it's the same thing, Reddit or Twitter or anything. Don't let them rewrite who built this stuff. Just because they're greedy assholes, evil people advising them about every little loophole so they can harvest us, so they can extract as much from us as possible and give nothing back. Okay, don't let them gaslight you and, to, and tell you that you're not doing enough because you fucking are. If anything... You're, you're doing too much. You're putting up with too much. If anything, it's not that you're not doing enough. It's that you're putting up with too much. And we shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be putting up with it. We need to figure out a new way to do this stuff.
because it's just unacceptable to me. They're getting post-economic off of our back. It's not theirs. It was never theirs. And they knew that because if, if they didn't know that, they would have told us up front what they, what they were about. But they didn't. They built these lies and these communities and exploited all of our goodwill and trust and weaponized it against us. So thank you for everyone who has contributed to WordPress over the years. I appreciate you more than words can say. And um, if I can ever be of help, pass the torch, because I've got a lot of stuff up here, a lot of, lot, a lot of knowledge about the solutions and stuff. If I can ever help you, if you're a little player and you need a bit of help in any way, let me know. Obviously, I don't run an agency anymore, but I'm always, always happy to help and give advice, especially if you're a young freelancer or, you know, setting up a new agency or something. I've got a world of experience in that stuff. Um, <clears throat> my voice is about to give out. So have a good one. Hopefully I have made something uh, that makes sense. And um, I appreciate everyone who has contributed to this over the last 20 years. And I have absolutely no fucking time or love for the people who ripped everyone off. Give it back. It's not yours. Pay me. Fuck you. Goodbye.